video I would like to show you the four steps I take to create watercolor wash and line drawing. And I will also be talking about a few things I do to give my painting more finished look, to turn it into a finished piece of art instead of a quick sketch and give it more visual interest and variety. I am going to paint on Bristol, which is just thick white paper. It's not watercolor paper. The reason I choose Bristol is because I plan on using thin markers and they don't go that well on watercolor paper because watercolor paper is very textured and Bristol is smooth. Watercolors will look a little bit different on Bristol. They will not be as bright as on watercolor paper, but we can actually use it to our advantage and have a different kind of more vintage, slightly faded look. My first step will be a very loose watercolor wash where I will let colors run and mix on paper. You see the colors I'm using on your screen? These are of course totally random and optional. You can use whichever colors you want if you decide to try the same subject. I didn't do a preliminary drawing. You see I'm drawing with my brush a little bit. I'm also using splattering and the reason I'm starting with a wash and no drawing because I want this to be a very loose painting. A lot of times artists start with a drawing and they start with a ink or marker outline but I think that's a little bit different approach more suitable to illustration that's usually what illustrators do also artists who work in realistic or hyper realistic style because they have to have certain precision I want my painting to be very loose and expressive so not starting with a drawing and not starting with lines but starting with wash helps me to keep my painting loose and expressive the important consideration is that I didn't wet the paper beforehand and I'm trying not to use too much water because Bristol is not watercolor paper, it's thinner and it's not meant to absorb a lot of water. You see the paint is sitting on the surface. So I'm, I am even going to pick up the puddles with my paper towel very lightly. That also gives it interesting texture as well, it added bonus. So painting wet on dry and also trying to limit the amount of water that I use using just enough to let the colors mix. This is my watercolor wash. I'm going to let it dry and I will continue working on my piece. My second step will be to do a pencil sketch and then start working on the line work with my markers. So looking at my reference photo, I'm using a black and white reference, which also helps me to kind of not be influenced by the colors in the reference photo. Just be more creative and let lightly sketch in the elephants. At this stage, you can also use charcoal rub on the back side of a printout of the reference photo, but I think I can get this drawn pretty easily. There is no complicated perspective or anything like that. Another reason why I do sketch after I apply the watercolor wash is that, as we all know, once you put watercolor on top of pencil, you can't erase it anymore. So I didn't want all the pencil lines under the wash. Sketching as a second step will actually allow me to make corrections. I'm going to start my line work. I'm using slightly thicker marker. This is a Sharpie, black Sharpie. I'm going to use this first. This uh, drawing is fairly large. This is 11 by 14 inches. I am squinting when looking at the reference photo and I'm trying to find the darkest lines in the reference photo. And you see I'm holding the marker pretty far away from the tip. I'm kind of holding it like a, you would a piece of charcoal or a piece of pastels or something like that because I want very light kind of painterly line. I don't want heavy black lines just yet. I will add some accents at the later stage of the development of this piece. But for now, I just want to lightly distribute the darkest accents in my sketch. Also, allowing the line to have some breaks helps our sketch to breathe. It stops it from being very heavy and overworked.
And now I'm switching to a finer marker, different tip size. These are all very inexpensive and they're available online or anywhere. It's not a problem to find all these markers. And I'm going to work on the wrinkles on the elephants because their skin is so textured. It's covered with little marks and wrinkles and finer point marker allows me to capture all those and give them that interesting realistic texture. This is a little bit different technique for me. I usually don't work with markers very much and I don't work like this, but I decided to just try something different and experiment. And you can let me know in comments if this experiment was successful in your opinion. The marks on their skins also go kind of a cross hatch pattern, so we can do that in a few places. To lighten it a little bit, I'm switching to a purple marker. I found those in my art supply store in Texas Art Supply here in Houston, and they had all different colors. I know they sell sets of those, but I really prefer buying separate colors and for markers and pencils as well so you can get the ones you need. I thought purple because I love that color and it's often present in my watercolor paintings. I thought I could use purple markers. I actually got a couple, one more kind of lilac and this one is slightly darker purple. And I'm going to add even more texture to the elephants, do those cross hatch wrinkles on their skins and maybe darken some areas a little bit. The trunks are wet so they're a lot darker than the rest of the skin and you see they're slowly acquiring more realistic look and the drawing the, the piece is getting a little bit more developed so i'll keep working on this let's work on the baby elephant as well we can give them something to stand on maybe hint at the cast shadow under their feet there they have some water there but i'm not going to draw all the details keep this more kind of sketchy undefined even though we can go pretty realistic with this technique it will just require a lot more time that i'm spending on this sketch speaking of time i probably worked on this for about half an hour not counting the watercolor drying time so this is a very fast technique and i think it will actually be good not just for studio painting but for working on location because getting all these details with watercolor will require hours of work. Line work actually helps us to work a lot faster and get all the information on paper a lot faster. All right, we're ready for our third step. We need to intensify the color wash in some areas. Watercolor lightened when it dried and it becomes especially light on Bristol because I didn't use a lot of pigment so i am going to take a flat brush and using very little color i'm going to pick up saturated pigment from my palette and darken the colors into certain areas i'm basically painting medium tones and medium dark tones i would say the lines are very dark and the color wash is very light so i want some sort of a transition between the two and that's what I'm working on right now. So this is the third step in my painting development. And I can soften colors to a certain extent, maybe blend it with the lights, with the medium light tones, and also switching between, you see I'm switching between Cascade Green and my Crimson Lake. When mixed together, they give me beautiful purple color, which also adds visual interest to my painting. Again, important to squint when looking at the reference photos, so we don't do too much. I don't want to cover the whole area with color. Again, I want to only accentuate certain areas, so I will incorporate the line work into my painting a little bit better. the background a little bit it's pretty dark so to make the elephants stand out more I am increasing the contrast in the elephants but also I'm accentuating the light areas on the elephants by darkening the background 
Let's work on the big one. And green is cooler, of course, than the uh, crimson lake. So in darker areas, I'm using green mostly or a mixture of green and crimson lake to push those areas back. But in lighter mid-tones, I'm using crimson lake. So that's kind of the principle. And like I said, these colors absolutely have no meaning. This is totally abstract approach. So you can use whichever colors you like, which ones you want to pick. I picked this because they're complementary, red and green, and I threw in yellow just for a little bit of warmth to kind of show the sunlight, but any other colors will work as well. You can make this more monochromatic. If you don't want to switch colors, you can use just indigo or ultramarine blue or something like that. That will work really well with black outline, or if you have sepia colored brown sharpies, they look great also, and you can use maybe earth tone palette so every artist can have their own interpretation and you see that i'm gradually building up pigment the paper can withstand it to a certain extent but once it starts puddling i pick it up with my paper towel because bristol can absorb only so much moisture and i don't want the paper to buckle too much or start deteriorating so definitely have a paper towel handy so you can pick up puddles of water and I don't think it's a good idea to leave them and wait for them to dry because there will be a um, blossom most likely, that cauliflower spot. Bristol doesn't behave like watercolor paper. And maybe using hot press watercolor paper will work for this technique too because it has no texture, but I don't have any, so that's why I'm using Bristol. The step is done, we need to let everything dry. The last most fun step will be adding highlights and also adding the darkest accents. I want to give even more variety to my painting. Even though I left some lighter areas, I see that they need to be even lighter. So again, squinting when looking at the reference photo, and I'm picking out some very bright whites that I see in the reference photo. I'm using a water-based white marker. It's also a Sharpie brand. You see I'm kind of wiping it on my masking tape because it picks up the color on that felt tip, but it actually works pretty well and it's fairly opaque. So gives another dimension to my artwork. add a little texture in the background with it. I usually splatter when I do this if I'm using inks, but with marker can splatter, so I'm just going to do some dots. Maybe lighten the background a little bit. There is uh, some light there. But also try not to do a huge amount and not kind of cover everything with white marks. I know sometimes it happens, we just do too much but just a little bit more visual interest for our artwork. And also an important step would be to give even more variety to our line work and to find the darkest accents. These usually appear when two forms touch, so definitely where those elephants are pressing against each other with their trunks, there will be very dark accent. I switched back to my thicker Sharpie that I started with, and I'm adding those dark accents, not everywhere, but in just a few areas, they make my form a little more three-dimensional, my line work becomes more varied, the elephants are the focal point, so I need to make them stand out a little more. The background is fairly busy, so we need to do something to make those elephants read a little better, tell the viewers that that's the subject of our sketch. So adding some darker accents. This will be the last step in my drawing process. If you enjoy watercolor wash and line technique, let me know in comments what's your usual order of painting and also what are your favorite materials. Do you like Sharpies or do you recommend some other brand of markers for this technique? I know there are plenty of different ones. Here's the final sketch. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamara Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!